Hey guys, welcome back to the JF17 tutorials for the air-to-air -air modes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the RWS mode, how to use the IFF interrogation for air-to-air, -air, and how to see any kind of targets on your SA pages, and how to hook into the data link. So this is going to be a very basic tutorial on just how to do very basic SDT-10 launches, and then how to do some other things in regards to those as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what we're going to deal with here is we're actually going to start the mission, and we're going to unpause. What you want to make sure of is that you are set to COM2199 for the data link. So we'll click on that and make sure that we're in master and NES, which is actually shown in my startup guide because I always suggest that you have that on your startup. And then what we're also going to make sure is that our IFF is enabled. So we're going to click the UFP button for the number 8, and then you can choose your IFF interrogation mode as well, which you should also do during startup. But just in case you haven't, this is where we're going to relearn it. To mode 1, and then you can return. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to look at our radar page. You'll notice that we're actually not inside the air-to-air -air mode because we have our EFIS up here. And then we also have a few other things that are kind of showing that we're in navigation mode. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to press the button 2 and switch to air-to-air -air mode. And you'll see we get some different symbology here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause while we look at some of the symbology. First of all, on your SA page here, you'll notice that you have... Um, actually your missile threat range here and then you can see that you have your radar cone here and let me unpause real quick and then actually repause just so you can see the different um you know ranges excuse me as i stutter so first here on our sa page we can see that correlates with our radar over here as well we have a target at twenty three thousand feet here which should be our l39 target and then we also have a target here at twenty three thousand feet which should be a friendly target we can also correlate that with our SA page. So as we can see here, we have a target at 23,000, 23,000. It's always going to be in the angle, top angles of the triangles on both screens. So as you can see, it's in the top angle, top angle, top angle, top angle, that 23. That's what that stands for. Also here on our SA page, when we change to air-to-air -air mode, we can see the IDs that are in the middle of these triangles, so 03 and 04, also correlate with the IDs down here. So we can see here for ID 4, we're looking at ID 4, it's at a bearing of 018 for a range of 14 nautical miles with a deviation of 473 and an altitude of 23,000 feet. If we look at the 03, obviously, which is going to be our enemy L39, we can see it's bearing 354 for 36 nautical miles, 686 for 23,000 feet. Obviously, that correlates with our radar symbology, that also correlates with the data link, and those two actually hook in together to make sure that it gets an accurate picture. Also here on these left sides, you can disable and enable some of these uh, symbologies that show up. So if you want to click the friendly button, you'll actually notice that the friendly targets will disappear. Obviously, we don't have a friendly target yet because we have not gotten to the IFF interrogation. So we cannot click that. Nothing will disappear. So let's go ahead and look back at our radar real quick here. Hold on. So we're looking back at our radar. I'm going to pause one more time here. What we're going to also notice here is that we have the same thing as the SA page, a target about 40 miles at 23,000 feet, a target closer at 23,000 feet. And actually, these lines that are coming off the triangles correlate to which heading they're taking. So this L39 up here at 23,000 feet is coming straight on at us. And then this Mirage 2000 that I know is friendly, spoilers, is coming basically towards the ocean. And then here, actually, on our radar cursor, you can notice that we have two numbers here. So this is a radar cursor with the two uh, vertical lines. And then here, this 27,000 is our 27,000 feet at the top of the scan. And then this 20 is 20,000 feet at the bottom of the scan. Some other things that we can notice here is we can see our bar. So we're at three bar right now on this scan. We're at a 25 azimuth here. You can click on both of those to change those. You can also see that this is our nautical mile ranging. So we can change from 40 nautical miles to a higher ranging with these two buttons here that correlate to the arrows. You can also see which mode we're in. So right now we're in track while scan mode. You can also turn your radar off or on standby by clicking this middle button. The IFF doesn't really have a button, so ignore that one. And then the SIL, which is also there. You have to disable the standby and SIL to get your radar working in the first place, just in case you can't even get this far. So let's unpause one more time and let's look at some more symbology. So over here, we can see our uh, SMS page. And what we can notice here is a few different things about the missiles. So right now, it's boxed around the SD-10, which means that we have that missile selected, and that's the singular one that's going to fire. So we can guess that it's going to fire off our right wing because that is the one that's boxed, pylon 2. That's useful whatever very basic prep mode is going to stay in auto we can see that our sdt 10 is on here if the missile is off it says sd sdt 10 off or pl at 5 off that means that we need to turn on our master arm or else the missiles are not going to fire excuse my stuttering and also the target type should also be um mid 
or I believe it changes to large, yep, or small. I have to remember which ones this plane had. So that's going to relate to how big your target is. Um, obviously, middle is like a medium-sized fighter jet, and then large is going to be more of like a um, IL-76, any kind of cargo planes, maybe a C-130 almost, something like that. A few other things here is that we have our um, gun sight change. So if you want to have like a snake gun sight instead of just a fixed target um, line, then you can change that with those once you go into the dogfight modes, but we'll get into that later. So let's go ahead and look back at our radar here, and then let's notice a few things here. So these targets are moving, and what we need to do is if we want to get a good enemy or friendly return, we want to hit that IFF interrogation button, which is also correlates to the keybind I. So we're going to hold that down, and you'll see that our IFF there at the top gets boxed. So when that gets boxed, we get two returns here. So we get a red return for the enemy that's at 23,000 feet, and then we get a green return for the friendly mirage. Nothing else changes about these symbols except for the friendly contacts will come back as a circle instead of a triangle. That kind of helps us differentiate in a quick uh, setting which one is which by just judging shapes and colors. Very useful. I highly recommend that you get used to this. Also, let's look at something here real quick. Let's uh, move over here. And then let's look at this SA page. You'll notice that the same thing happened on the SA page. That the target switched to a red triangle and that the green target switched to a green circle. So if you're not exactly looking at your radar, but you do an IFF, as long as they're inside this white triangle here, we can make sure that we can IFF interrogate them. So is once they're in the right triangle and they get a return, they change on the SA page, just like the radar. You don't have to worry about looking at one or the other. You can look at either one and you'll get the same answer. So let's go ahead and come back down here to our target page. And then let's actually do something here. I want to demonstrate a few of the changes that we can do with our radar. We're not going to worry about this friendly Mirage. He was just there for an IFF interrogation. So as you can see here, we can change our nautical mile ranging to 80, 40, 20, 10, and that's pretty much it for this one. And then you can change your azimuth from 25 to 60, 10. There's a few different options that you can do here depending on how fast you want your scans to return. But for now, we're just going to stay in the 25 range. What we'll do is if we want to lock a target, we're going to click our enter button for the locking target keybind. You'll click it once. You'll see here that you got some steering cues here. And then you also have your... Um, ranging and a few other things inside the symbology so as you can see here we can tell a few things about the target once we've locked him we can see here that he's at 31.3 nautical miles with a 42 seconds until we reach each other and we're plus 686 knots that's pretty useful we can use that in relation to how we want to engage this target that's kind of it you'll also notice that if we come over here to our uh sa page that we get kind of the same thing we get a straight line towards the target that we're engaging we can also see here that he's inside our red dotted triangle um, or I guess pizza slice more is what I would call it. And we can see that our line is pointing straight towards him. So through the SA page, just like the radar, we can tell exactly which target that we are going to engage, which is very useful in a general sense. So now let's go ahead and look at some of our HUD symbology here. You'll see here that we can see the same things up here. So we can see that we have a range of 30.9 nautical miles, the 686 knots plus, and obviously all those other things that we talked about earlier. We can also see some of our own things and a few, and we can also see that steering cue. So what we need to do now is that we need to come down here and let's click that target one more time to get him into a normal STT lock. We'll see here on our HUD that we have the same thing. And then we're just gonna wait till we get a little bit closer for a good shoot cue. So we're gonna wait, hold on here. Okay, so let's talk a few different things that popped up on our HUD here. So as we can see here, the target is now at 23 nautical miles. And we actually have a thing on our HUD that's now gonna start flashing that shows in range. We can also see their STT 10 is ready, which is good. And then we can also see that we have an STT lock here as well. So when this flashes in range, it means that the target, as you can see down here in the radar, maybe not, but I'll get a little bit closer in a second, is inside that top green line, which means that he's in the maximum range for the missile. So let's actually go ahead and unpause and let's look down here real quick and we'll see that this target is going in between these two lines. And we'll actually get a shoot cue, I believe, when he reaches this bottom line. But that's going to take a while and we don't really want to wait for the L39. So we're just going to go ahead and shoot at maximum range. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the missile weapon launch key and you'll notice that on our... Uh, right pylon excuse me it will shoot that missile that was completely wrong it was the left pylon i feel dumb now and then it will shoot that missile and it will track its target the only thing that's kind of different compared to other jets like the f-18 and a few other jets is that you may notice that we don't actually have a missile icon on our radar this will not show you how far out this missile is how close it is to the target or anything really like that you kind of just have to guess um so it's kind of sad but it works and it's okay <laughs> it's, it's very basic but this jet is not meant for bvr only this is not the f-22 of pakistan this is more of like the uh um i want to say almost like the f-16 of pakistan it really is honestly it gets the job done but it does it dirty you know 
And then what we're going to notice is that our missile is tracking the target, and that's kind of all there is for an STT lock. I mean, honestly, it's a very basic launch. Um, it's There's not much to it. I'm sorry for complicating some of it. Obviously, I'll go more in-depth when we get into regards of, like, the total, like, data link and HSD symbology. But, I mean, this is very basic, just how to get a shot off and keep moving and understand some of the symbology that you're getting. I appreciate you guys for watching. I appreciate you for everything that you've done. And um, subscribe if you like the content. There'll be plenty more. Thank you.